Hey everybody, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. As you can see, we've got Project Pointless. I, I think I called it Project Pointless. I forget now. This is a Vericom or Panda Pandemonium. And we are going to kind of keep moving on this project here. It's got that weird shock power thing where you gotta spread these apart to get this thing out. There we go. In our last installment, we rebuilt the transmission and got it all prepared for the rear suspension. And we're also gonna put on the front suspension this time. So I'm gonna start with the front suspension. The front end came in from Shapeways earlier this week. So we can see that we have both arms that I've designed. And then I've got some special shock mounts here for these HSP shocks that I picked up. These are 1 16th scale shocks. And I love these things. The biggest problem that they have though is that they uh, are not designed to accept three millimeter diameter hardware. So you can see over here that these uh, bores are only two millimeters. So that means a standard screw uh, on a Panda or like on a Tamiya won't fit. So what we've done here is made some adapters so that we can get this shock here to make to this car. Here is our shock tower and we are going to install these arms. So as usual, it's going to be imperative that you take the arm and you drill out all the holes to three millimeters uh, in order to prevent binding. So these are slightly undersized. I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. I'll be right back. I did design these arms to be direct replacements to the originals. So the hardware required for the original arms is exactly the same as what is required for the new ones. I'm gonna go ahead and start by putting this on here. Unfortunately, this is the first time I've ever assembled this car. So I may, uh, have to do a couple things uh, a few times here in case I do something wrong. So it looks like, uh, okay, that goes in just like that. And there's our arm. I'll do the same to the other side. Next, we'll place the upright and get in the little hole. Okay, there is the upright. And lastly, we'll put in the, the upper link. I think this is the screw that we used here. As you're watching me do this, um, if you have experience with any of the Panda cars or Vericom or Gropner, uh, depending, I guess they were just called different things depending on where they were sold, please leave a comment. I'm very curious to hear your experience some of these cars. And I know that oftentimes there's a lot of vehicles out there that I'm simply not aware of or that many people aren't aware of. So if you've got one of these cars, I would love to hear about it. And there we have it. Let me do the same to the other side. So I'm gonna take the shock part here. These are brand new. There is a little bit of oil that does come with these. Pop that out. And okay, here it is. So I'm going to swap out this cap here. Clean my hands. I'm gonna swap out this cap here for this one right here. Put that right in. I'll put that O-ring in in a second because I can't do that on camera. I'm gonna run 50 weight shock oil in the front of these and we're gonna crank these loose. These aren't pliers. These are actually round in cross section. So there's only a point load on the shock shaft. I really don't have any shock pliers. I really need to get some of these. So I'm gonna install this on the bottom. I gotta clean these out a little bit. Uh, occasionally there's some leftover powder from the 3D printing process. We'll put some 50 weight shock oil in here after I clean that out and I'll be right back with a fully assembled shock. Shock absorber is updated now and I couldn't wait so I put the other one in and I will show you at this point here how this is going to go in. It's going to go in the uh, exact same way with the same hardware. I don't really care for how this is assembled but you know it's not like this car is going to get a lot of use. Get in there and there's supposed to be an M3 screw in here and I don't want to put that in there. I'm just going to put a screw pin down here because that's a lot easier to deal with other than an M3 and then a nut. So there's that right there. Let me thread this in. All right, went ahead and installed the shock absorbers. So here you can see we have some nice oil-filled shocks. And we'll put this on. And I have a feeling that the servo saver has to go on first. I, I don't know why, but I seem to recall that. So this is going to go on. Like that. This is the weirdest design. A lot of flexing has to occur to put this car together. I really don't like that. So this comes in. This goes in. 
and uh, there we go. So there's four self-tapping screws right there. I'll put these four screws in and I'll be right back. Knuckles are put back in the car. I also installed the servo and centered it, so that's all ready to go. I'm really pretty excited about this. I mean, it feels really nice. And I also like the fact that the yellow shock absorbers have been omitted. To me, the big problem with having something that, that visually stands out this much is that it kind of limits the color of the vehicle, almost to the fact that you have to have yellow, but also it makes the shocks become a focal point on the car, and I really don't see that as something that benefits the car's appearance. Uh, but we'll get into that when we do repaint this thing. At this point here, I did change the back shocks. You can see that the top eyelid is much, much different. There we go. And the bottom, again, also much different. I had to make this a lot longer because the factory shock absorber is quite long. It's not the exact length. It's maybe off by a couple of millimeters, but I really wanted to limit some of the exaggerated dimensions. Also, this top piece here, you can see the walls are about a millimeter thick and I would never produce and sell something like this because it's simply not going to be strong enough for thorough bashing. But on this vehicle, it's going to, it's going to last a million years. But this is uh, one of those things I had to concede to because I simply had few options with this shock geometry. I did end up putting these little ball joints in the rear shocks because that's how they were originally done with these yellow ones. So I popped these out and put them in here. And now we're going to try and install this. We'll just thread this in. Okay, that's as far as that goes. And the bottom works the same way. So actually, you probably want to put a washer on this. The top did not need the washer because it wasn't, uh, because it was captured on both sides. Okay, and that's, that's it. Probably should put two in before we start messing with it. So let me grab that other one. I did go ahead and put the left shock onto the vehicle. Uh, a little bit of time has passed since what for you was seconds ago. I decided that this top piece that I showed you earlier with that really thin wall, I don't know, it just kind of scared me a little bit, uh, especially because I had to press in these little pivot balls down there. I hope you can see it. So basically so that they can pivot. And I took them out of the original rear shocks here. And you can see how beefy the wall thickness is on this one. So what I did is I just 3D printed another part that goes around this, slipped it over it and super glued it into place. This way it's got a little more rigidity. And again, I'm not really gonna beat this car up, but I just was a little bit uncomfortable with that. And then the shaft down here was really uh, long, but really thin. And I don't know why I did that. This must have been a mistake because usually when I do stuff like this, I do have it a lot more beefed up. So just like the top, I printed a small collar, slipped it over the main body and glued it into place. This way it's a little bit beefier. Anyway, the rear suspension is in. It's quite nice, actually. Front suspension, same way. Actually, the front end's really, 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 really nice. I'm quite happy with how it came out. I'm even more happy that this car already has double wishbone suspension because that is one less thing that I have to do to the car. So I'm quite happy with how this came out so far. The rear suspension in particular is quite smooth, very fluid, and really this pivot point, it's quite nice. I mean, the, the overall rolling feel of the rear end is very nice, um, but the weird thing is it does have, I'm gonna try and show you like this, it has this kind of weird resultant play that kind of makes the whole rear end turn, which isn't great, but again, we're talking about an entry level car here. The next thing I wanna do is toss in the stock motor. While you weren't looking, I went ahead and put some calm drops on the brushes. I also lubricated the bottom and top bushings. There's not much more you can do with these closed end bell motors, so I'm gonna let it be for there. And I did kind of give the whole thing a scrub with some alcohol to take off some of the corrosion and other miscellaneous that has populated it over the years. The motor fits really deep into this slot here, so I did have to pull the back tire off. I was hoping to just wedge it in, and that simply was not the case. Put the two screws in over here, and the motor did come with this little cap, which I don't know how necessary it is, but if I don't put it on the car, then it's just gonna go in my drawer. And that is the last thing I want to do is add more crap. And it seems to just kind of press on to the main body over here. It doesn't touch the back of the, uh, the motor. In doing this, I just realized how badly the wiring on the motor is. So I'm gonna pull this back off and fix the wiring. I'm just gonna tin this motor terminal real fast here. There is still a capacitor attached on the other side. So I do wanna make sure it uh, stays that way. 
Maybe I've put a tad too much solder on this. And also melted the insulation, but that is all your fault because I've got my phone in the middle of my face. It's always great to blame YouTube. The plan is to have them both exit the same one. And let's see if that is even possible. I always get annoyed when one of the wires is longer than the other, but uh, well, that's a lot better. This way, I'm not gonna have to deal with a wire just kind of dangling out the bottom of the car. I'll put this tire back on now. So this car has a very interesting way of holding the rear wheel on. Unlike uh, most Tamiyas that have a five lug adapter here, this one has this a notch cut out in the rim specifically for the pin to slot into. I haven't made a decision yet on what rims to use on this car. I almost would feel bad getting rid of these as they're so iconic to this particular car. But at the same time, they kind of hold the car's design back. First, given the fact that they're yellow and uh, that means enough to tie in a paint job to a yellow wheel. But secondly, it seems that all pandemoniums have these rims. So maybe we can go down a different path with some aftermarket wheels on this car, uh, a vintage style. I haven't made up my mind yet. Uh, if you have any suggestions, please leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear some. Right now, I'm quite interested to see how the car is gonna look with these silver shocks. So let's throw on this body and see what kind of new look we might have. You gotta do weird stuff back here, which I completely loathe. But that is going to be a nightmare when I paint this body. How It's like, how do you paint the body and then scrape it down these sides to get it in place and not ruin everything? That's, I don't know. I, I have to admit that lacking the yellow shocks, we no longer have such a prominent visual cue here on this car. It really, they don't stand out nearly as much. Boy, look at that axle. Can you see that? Watch this. I'm gonna kind of lean the car. That is, I am, I am not holding my breath as to how well this car handles, to be honest. I'm interested, but I'm not expecting very much. Well, everyone, I think that is about it for this video here. The next time we see this car, we'll be installing the electronics and giving it a test run. I've also got to figure out what happened to the bumper. I don't remember if I had one on here and I just took it off. I may have to look back at one of the earlier videos of this car because I simply have no idea where it went. Once the car's electronics are all squared away, I think at that point it will be time to address this body. I do have some spectacular decals already for this car, care of MCI Racing. So I'm really excited for that. But in the meantime, uh, there's still a lot of work we've got to do because this body does need, it does need some love. And, you know, ultimately, I think everybody knows how I am. I, I really don't mind the fact that the chassis is scratched up. It's got a notch cut in it here. It's got some notches cut in it there. I like the fact that this car saw some life. I have no intention of making everything perfect. I like the fact that this car has got some roughness to it. With that said, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment below if you have any questions about this build. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Ampro Engineering on both. And before you take off, please do not forget to check out the band Blue Pinto, who allows me to use their songs in my videos. And a link to their Facebook page is in the end credits. Thank you all so much, and we'll see you next time. Just, just, just one more. One more. <laughs>